Hi there. Now what I want to do in this tutorial is extend the work that we've been doing on the chain rule. If you're unfamiliar with the chain rule, do go back and look at the first tutorial in this series. So by now, you should be familiar then with the chain rule, which is dy by dx equals dy by dt times dt by dx, where t is some function of x. And in each of these examples, what we've got is that they're based around the sine of some function of x, or the cosine of some function of x, or the tan of some function of x. And this example might look a bit strange, but it can be changed into one of these particular forms. I won't go into that for now. You might want to try it later yourself, or for that fact, any of these examples. But when it comes to y equals the sine of all of 5x plus 1, what we can do then is see this as y equals a sine t, a being a constant, it will be 1. And we should be familiar with differentiating a sine t gives us a cosine t. So for this one, if we let t equal the 5x plus 1, we should by now be able to go straight in and get dy by dx. dy by dx then is dy by dt. We've got y equals the sine of t. Differentiating that gives us the cosine of t, t being 5x plus 1. I'll just put this in brackets. And then what we need to do is multiply this by dt by dx. We differentiate with respect to x what we call t. t was 5x plus 1. If we differentiate that with respect to x, we get 5. And all we need to do now is just clean this up. And we get 5 cosine of all of 5x plus 1. Okay? So the other examples here, and even this one, are all very similar. So you might want to pause the video at this stage and just try your hand at these examples. So when it comes to y equals 3 cosine of all of x squared plus 5, then we'd let t equal the x squared plus 5 because it now has the form y equals a cosine t. Differentiate with respect to t, you get minus a sine t. So therefore, Based on this result, we've got dy by dx equals, we need to find dy by dt first. So we've got y equals 3 cosine t. Differentiate that with respect to t. Then we get minus 3 sine t. So minus 3 sine of all of x squared plus 5. And then I'll put this in square brackets, and then we multiply this by dt by dx. So we differentiate x squared plus 5 with respect to x, giving us 2x. So when we simplify this, minus 3 times the 2x gives us minus 6x, and then we've got the sine of all of x squared plus 5. Okay? Now when it comes on to this next one, y equals 2 tan of all of 3x to the power 4 minus pi over 2. Then it's got the form y equals a tan t, t being the 3x to the 4 minus pi upon 2. And we should be familiar with differentiating the tan of something. If y equals a tan t, dy by dt is equal to a sec squared t. So Therefore, from this result, we've got that therefore dy by dx is going to equal differential of y equals 2 tan t is going to be 2 sec squared t. t then is 3x to the power 4 minus the pi over 2. Let's put that in square brackets. And then we need to multiply this by dt by dx. Differentiating t with respect to x, which was 3x to the 4 minus pi upon 2, you're just going to get 12x cubed here, because the pi upon 2 is a constant. So we've got 
x to the power 3, 12x cubed then. And so tidying this up is going to give us 2 times the 12x cubed, that's going to be 24x cubed, and then it's multiplied with sec squared, all of 3x to the power 4, minus pi over 2. There you go. Now what about this last one? 4 all divided by cosec of 2x minus 3. Well, cosec, remember, as a function, is 1 over sine. So here we've got 4 all divided by 1 over the sine of 2x minus 3. And that can be simplified to 4 sine of all of 2x minus 3. All right. So this now puts us back into this form, y equals a sine t. So we should now be able to differentiate this. Therefore, we've got dy by dx equals differentiating 4 sine t with respect to t just gives us 4 cosine of t. 4 cosine then of all of 2x minus 3. I'll put that in square brackets and then again just multiply this by dt by dx. Differentiate t which was 2x minus 3 with respect to x and you've got 2. Put this all together and you've got 4 times 2 is 8 and you end up with 8 times the cosine then of 2x minus 3. So hopefully you can see now how to differentiate functions like these by using the chain rule. Now in the next video, what I want to do is extend this work even further by looking at powers of trigonometric functions. Like for instance, y equals sine cubed of all of 5x plus 1. y equals say 3 cos squared of all of x squared plus 5 and so on. And what it requires is a double dose, if you like, of the chain rule. But what you must be familiar with is this idea first of all before you can proceed. So do make sure you really do understand this then first of all. So that brings us now to the end of this particular tutorial and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.